My name's Jeff Bajoric, and my career in sales has been a hell of a ride. And I want to bring you along with me. If you prefer to sell things at a premium, if you never want to win a deal on price, rethink the way you sell. Welcome back to the show. My name's Jeff Bajoric. I'm your host, and I'm here to help you rethink the way you sell. I'm going to get a little emotional today. I guess I don't intend to cry, but we never know, right? Uh, but I want to talk about the emotions in the sales process and how our prospects have to have them and how you as the seller need to avoid them as much as possible. That's an interesting dichotomy. But when you think back to what I told you a couple of episodes ago, actually several episodes ago, but people buy emotionally first then justify their purchases logically later. So if you're prospecting, if your discovery, if your pitch, if your recommendation isn't wrapped around those emotions, if it's based instead on logic, you are going to probably lose a lot of deals that you could win. The flip side of that, though, you as the seller need to remember logic as much as possible. The logic of it ain't over till it's over, baby. Buying signals are great, but they're not as great as signatures on dotted lines. Those, those intentions are important, but, you know, checks getting cashed are a little bit more valuable. And that's a dichotomy you need to be mindful of. Because one of the most effective ways to transfer emotion is to be emotional yourself. Remember, selling is a transfer of enthusiasm. So hold on, this all sounds really, really confusing. Jeff, do you mean to tell me that I'm supposed to make my prospects emotional and that my emotions will contribute to that end, but if I get carried away in my emotions, I can screw the whole thing up? Yes, that's exactly what I'm telling you. And what you need to do in these moments, in these processes, is make sure that you are mindful of your process. And I don't mean your methods. Your methods are where a lot of that emotion is going to come from. Your process dictates what needs to happen in order for the sale to be completed. So remember the science. Remember those things that you need to get done in order to usher that deal in from beginning to end. And I refer often to The Lost Art of Closing. Anthony Iannarino wrote that book, and it outlines the 10 commitments that need to be earned in order to drive new sales. Or some, that's, a, that's an approximation of the subtitle. It's called The Lost Art of Closing. I'll link to it in the show notes. Go check it out. Um, I love that book because each of these 10 commitments, if you earn them all, you will make the sale. Period. That's science. It's as close to science as selling gets. The problem is that you can miss a few of them and still win, but every deal you lose, you can trace back to more than one of those commitments you did not earn. And why do I tell you all this? Why am I talking about process when well, I mean to be spending this episode talking about emotion? Well, you need to be logically focused on your process while making your prospect as emotional as possible. It's tricky. But that's what you can return to. You return to truth, right? A lot of salespeople out there start to get happy ears when their, their prospects talk about buying. You know, when they give you those buying signals that are tried and true, bona fide, you recognize them. And as soon as you see them, you get excited. And then when they say, okay, we've just got a couple of things left, just need someone to sign off, shouldn't be that big of a deal, we'll have a decision for you by the end of the week, you start to think about what your name looks like at the top of the leaderboard because that big deal came in. You start to wonder what the commission check will look like in, you know, when that direct deposit hits. All of that really good stuff all leads you to a very emotional place and you have to, you have to abstain. You have to be guarded. I'm accused of this a lot in my house and among my friends. My wife will say, hey, sounds like that's going to move. That's, that's good. We can plan on that, right? And I say, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't think so. We don't celebrate verbals around here. We celebrate signatures. But Jeff, are you going to, I mean, come on. I mean, they, they said it was good. They asked for a, an invoice. Like, yeah, um, I've had deals fall apart at the very end because everything was ready to go until it wasn't. 
And so when you assume that things are going to happen, when you get caught up in the emotion of the moment and you make a rash decision or when you just forget to do something, that's on you. If you don't stay focused, if you don't stay disciplined, if you don't stay diligent, that's when you're going to miss the details that are necessary to take all that emotion on the prospect side and bring it all the way through to close. That's important. That deal that is in the bag can make you take your eye off the ball. You can't afford that. Your company can't afford that. Your family can't afford that. Stay diligent. Stay focused. When you focus on a process, you get results. When you focus on results, you get frustrated. You're going to hear that again because I say it a lot. But remember to focus on your process. Remember to relentlessly execute. So much about sales success is about project management and making sure that the things that need to get done get done in a timely manner. It's got way more to do with checking all those boxes than it does having some inordinate amount of influence. Is there an emotional and logical reason to get these things done? If there is, then make sure they get done. And that's how selling happens. But if you get carried away, well, that's when the ball gets dropped. So I want you to remember that. I want you to keep this in mind. And avoid getting carried away. Because there are a lot of things that are out of your control that can come out of nowhere and wreck a deal. You need to make sure that you have set the boundaries, that you have the structures in place, that you have executed on checking all those little boxes to eliminate as much as possible those things that are out of your control from coming in sweeping away that deal. And one of the things that is in your control is your emotional state throughout the sales process. We're going to talk about what it means to control the controllables, which is just a weird thing to say. It's a kind of a tongue twister, but uh, we're going to talk about that in next week's episode because so much of your ultimate sales success is going to be about managing your own emotions over the long term. Right Today, I talked a little bit about managing your emotions in the short term throughout a deal cycle, making sure that the prospect is as productively emotional in making the decision and invested in making the decision as possible while you are managing your emotions in the short term. But so much about swagger is about managing your emotions in the long term. And it's important that you keep these things in mind. So my question for you today is, how do you mind the difference between the emotion you're trying to create in your prospects and the emotion you're trying to abstain from in your own mind? I want you to think about that. I also want you to think about a deal in the past that maybe you lost because you got too emotionally involved, because you had some oversights, you made some mistakes, because you let your emotions get the best of you. I want you to think about that. It'd be a really nice, instructive, hopefully not too painful <laughs> lesson to remember, but it should impact and influence your behavior going forward. Really excited to dig into next week. This is a big one. Got a couple stories to share with you, and uh, I appreciate you being with me. I'll talk to you again soon. Rethink the Way You Sell is a pot about it production. It's mixed and edited by Doug Branson with music by Blue Dot Sessions and Doug Branson. This podcast is masterminded by Jeff Bajoric.